I risk building a reputation for time lapses where nothing happens. Okay, there's a duck. And an egret. A mighty egret. So, not my worst. We're going to start at a jaunty angle today, just a segue from the madness that was the last Lifeboat episode, dedicated to Alan's underwater destiny that's never going to happen. We've had a grim march here in England's Thames estuary, so the fresh, clear days are welcome, and I head inside Alan straight away to assess all that lead and cement in the bow. Folks, it's set properly, the first time I've ever used cement, and it's now primed and then painted with bilge paint. What unprecedented success you're able to witness here today. Right, we'll see if this works. This is the whale foot pump that couldn't generate enough forward pressure last time round to drive our precious water up, up, up and away. So I decided to try a hand pump which draws and drives water on both up and down movements, also from whale. I tried it with about a metre of rise to manage, and no good. Then I tried horizontal with no gravity to fight at all. Not really any good either. There's water flow, but it's a dribble. The carbon block filter is a tough obstacle for water, and it needs considerable and constant pressure. I don't want to downgrade to a granulated carbon filter, as block filters perform better when compared like for like. Right, so Alan! that. Avoiding electric power with this length of hose plus the block filter isn't going to happen. I've got myself a 12 volt submersible pump and a spare. This whilst connected to my little lithium FE battery gives a serious surge, and a surge is what we'll need, because there's distance, two filters, flexi pipe, and all manner of twists and turns to negotiate. For the stand pipe, I've got hold of the widest diameter cupro nickel brake line that I could muster. It's devilishly hard to order. You know those supplier websites that promise the world but then demand that you open a trade account, write them three encyclopedias over a period of a decade to justify your existence, and only then will they let you order a minimum of a thousand units. I just want to buy a few meters of Alan! tube. Anyhow, I got some tube and did my best to bend a section of it straight. This will hold its shape and should be joyously resistant to corrosion, algae and other nasties when submerged. I also need to run the pump's inbuilt DC power cable back up and out of the water tank, so I decided to neatly bind them together. To avoid any reactivity with water, disinfectant and so on, I'm using self-amalgamating silicon wrap and then a twist of stainless wire to halt any unravelling. The top end of the pipe is not barbed, of course, so I'm trying out the very tightest oak clips possible so we get a good seal when I clamp it all together on board. Luckily, I can do this union with some plastic pipe and some clips. There shouldn't be a leak here, but it's all submerged, so no drama. I'm pleased that I bought a job lot of assorted stainless host tail reducers from a Chinese wholesaler. They're oddly hard to find in the UK. Right, so the whole thing's held together for a sunny outdoor test. My neighbouring large squashed waste diesel tank really is useful for this sort of thing. I hope the yard bosses don't move it. I'll give you a tour. The pump, and then the standpipe and power cable rising up in imperfect unison, then the power cable goes off and does its own thing. Some nitrile hose and some reducers give us the tight diameter for the coarse sediment filter. Then another step down to give us the carbon block filter. It says that it can handle thousands of litres between swaps, so we should be okay for a while. Shame the spigots aren't barbed, but a tight pair of clips should work. Then a length of flexible PVC pipe, and a basic tap I bought for a fiver from a garden centre. Allen's other 12 volt batteries weigh nearly 70 kilos each, so again I humbly requested the service of my mini engine crank lithium battery. It agreed, and we were all lined up with the pump in a clean bucket of water, and the tap ending up in the same place. Circular perpetual majesty. It works. This is the tap fully open. I thought I might need to throttle the flow, but the dense, compacted nature of the carbon block filter, plus all the hose diameter adjustments, mean much of the pressure is lost. Rather pleasingly, it's almost exactly the controllable water flow rate I wanted once the trapped air bubbles are expelled. The carbon block can deal with pressure from a larger pump, but this will do for now. So let's install it some glands, a step cone drill, and all manner of optimism. I was exceedingly slow and deliberate with the cone drill. It's very new and very sharp. I found with soft plastics like this polyethylene that once it bites and starts to drill, if you're spinning too fast, then in a split second you'll have a gaping hole you can't put back in. Slowly does it, and again given the soft plastic, I kept trying to see whether the gland thread would just about push through. 
It also meant I could get the swarf out of the way and stop it falling into the bottom of the water tank. I think even by my standards that was detail overload. Right, but the gland is through. Sadly though, the plastic is too thick for the screw thread of the gland, and again, weirdly, I can only get extra long thread glands in one size in the UK, and that size is not this one. This means that the gland is only seated using friction, but the rest of the assembly should be pretty well fixed in by the end. I've separated off the cupro nickel standpipe away from the main apparatus and all we have here is the pump and the power cable running along next to it with those silicon ties. So my hope is that it will just be by about an inch or so that this goes in and I can get it low enough to actually get it inside. Yep, just it's set on the bottom now and then I can angle it so it'll come up through here. This is the standpipe, not the cable. Yep. One thing I've not really considered is fixing this down at the bottom because if you do this, you hear? So if this moves around in the tank, it will bosh against the inside, which is not what we want. So I'll need to find some way of keeping it where it needs to stay. This pendulum effect was a problem, as any uncontrolled movement is likely to lead to rubbing and chafing, not to mention a potential noise of much annoyingness. My solution for now is to wrap some EPDM rubber around, then a silicon wrap, and then a stainless steel twist, but it turns out that this only lessens the noise. Any ideas how to keep it still? The second hole is a great deal easier, as I have a 13mm drill bit that matches the smaller cable gland. This is one of the long thread glands I was talking about, and I just don't get why they are so hard to find. All the internal stuff is more or less working now, and we can move on to the worktop that will sit above the filters. Previously, lots of you made suggestions for how to edge the worktop to avoid bumps, injuries, and things rolling off. I've opted for some really thick rubber U-channel. The worktop needs supports that sit flat on top of the water tank. I've cut some wooden battens to size, sealed and treated them, and opted for a suave glossy black. I obviously need the corresponding holes in the worktop itself, and this is not the time to mess up the location, but we made two holes with 100% success and countersunk them so that the heads of the bolts can sit flush. The bolts enter the wooden battens and sit inside threaded inserts, and they do so at an angle. Not just any angle, but the angle I calculated the water tank was tilted at. The worktop is perfectly flat, and the water tank is at 10 degrees. That said, I'm not setting up the wooden supports at just one length, because what if the water tank sags or expands due to heat, the way it's bedded in, or some other unknown unknown, so I'm making the supports adjustable by about an inch or so. We'll see how that goes. Screws make useful testing instruments for slants or angles. Using a pair of nuts underneath the worktop seems to do the job, but I might need to fiddle with the design a bit. Worktop flat. We're making indefatigable progress aboard Allen. It means I can clip everything together. First, the nitrile hose onto the top of the Cupro nickel standpipe, and then somewhere to mount the larger filter. There's enough rigidity in the sequence of fittings for those two solid points to keep it still, but I may add a Munson ring halfway along. A note of caution, I've not really used acrylic before. It's more brittle than polycarb, ABS or polyethylene, and I caused a slight star crack whilst drilling one of the holes. But the main rig is in and I'm going to run the final length of hose around the side of the worktop and bind it to an adjustable stay put gooseneck. I've bought the gooseneck, but I'm awaiting the correct 5 8 ultra fine thread nuts that will help secure it to the worktop. I also need to run a proper fused 12 volt supply down to this area and screw in a sort of tie back to hold the worktop vertical when I need to maintain things or access the tank's top hatch. I won't fill the tank until we're ready for the off. I've made a new purchase. I'm wary and have zero experience, but will have a practice on some things that don't matter before moving on to non-critical jobs. Yes, folks and hecklers of Allen's army, I have purchased a stick welder. I need one for an upcoming task, and this welder costs less than an hour getting a pro to do it. Emphasis on non-critical jobs. I have tons of tasks partly complete now, new railings, electrics, and so on. They will make their way into episodes very soon. Only five or six weeks now until Alan needs to start moving. And I do love this little 12 volt food warmer, slow but safe and effective as it nurtures my lunch to a perfect temperature. 
We'll close with another time lapse where practically nothing happens. Not even a duck. Bye.